thank you so much for joining us this month for BIMX Teen Network. My name is Dana DeFillipi coming to you from my home office in Virginia. But I'm actually going to take you right over to the right here. Dan Warren, BIM Operation Manager with McMillan Pazdan Smith Architecture. He's going to be talking about some really cool stuff with BIM 360 projects and add-ins. I'm going to let him take it away. Awesome. Thanks, Dana. I assume y'all can hear me. Give me a thumbs up if uh, I'm broadcasting. Fantastic. Okay. So you can see from my graphic, uh, I, I work with architects. I am not an architect. So a uh, big distinction there. So um, what I wanted to talk about today is give a little bit more insight into this new product coming out or that's out called um, Auto, it's Bridge by Autodesk. Um, so it I really am excited about this product because it sort of upends the entire concept that BIM 360 was based on. In fact, I went back through all of our BIM execution plans and everything is like based on the assumption that BIM 360 projects do not transfer data from one project to another. And even with the desktop connector, there's some challenges to that, right? So, um, and this is the environment we currently exist in. If you're working at BIM 360, you can have the design team on one project and the build team on another project and you can't push data directly across, right? So you end up doing some sort of workaround like pushing to Bob's computer and then Bob uploads it to the build team so that it becomes available for them. Um, manual handling of files, in my opinion, is a massive waste of energy, but, um, but nowadays that's changed. So in the new environment, um, the AC, the Autodesk Construction Cloud with the build enablement allows you to create um, direct links between projects. And that's actually what I'm going to go through today is I'm going to show you how it actually works. And it's actually like during one of the testings, I guess I've been testing it. I was like, wow, this actually is super simple. And um, I'm really excited how it's going to change the way we work uh, on the cloud. But two things well, to note. Like, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. Dan. I feel like that's really kind of the migration we're seeing, right? Mm -hmm. With Dynamo, even we could say the same thing. It's like 10, 15 years ago, maybe somebody could argue that those years are different, but we saw the migration to BIM, right? Mm -hmm. From the 2D world to the 3D world. I think now we're really seeing this push on data, mm -hmm. right? And how we can access that data. And I'm loving it. Correct. Yeah. So I consistently talk with my teams about data flow and like where your data lives and how it's getting from point A to point B. Um, so there's two important things to note when you're sharing information is that um, the bridge uses has basically sort of two repositories you could pull and push from. One is the sheets section of build and the other is the files section of build. Um, and without getting too in depth in the difference between these two locations, basically the sheets is very similar to the, um, what was the root folder in BIM 360? Um, Plans? Plans. It's very similar to that. It allows you to create title blocks and automatically hyperlink drawings and do all that fun stuff. Which, yeah, um, I hated that name. Yeah. Like, it's um, such a specific name. Like, it's so much more than that. Yeah. Right? But the, yep. And uh, the whole process, like, there's, there's a couple things you have to get right to get this to work. So whether you are pushing or pulling data between projects because it supports both inbound and outbound data flows, you have to have permissions on both projects. Um, so I've got my dummy account here on the left and I've got my Dan Warren account on the right and I'm in two different projects. Yeah, I'm in project one and then project two, um, two different projects, two different environments. And I'm, I'm setting this up so I can show you how it works. So step one is I need to create that link. And that's actually really easy. Once you create your ACC project, um, with the enablements, you go to bridge. And then this is where I say, hey, I want to bridge to another project, right? So you create bridges to individual projects by connecting with specific users. So this is my robot account and it would be emailing Dan Warren. It would be emailing Dan Warren to say, hey, I want to I wanna bridge. And it's pretty much instantaneous. So then on my side, the receiving side, I actually get an email, um, which then allows me to say, okay, I'm gonna connect this BIM testing project one to another specific ACC project. 
right? And that's how Autodesk on the cloud side knows, okay, this project can talk to this project. But in order to push the data, my robot and me need to have admin rights on both projects. Um, and there's control over it. So don't think like you're giving somebody like unfettered, unfettered access to your, your project data. Um, the way it works is if you wanna control where somebody sends information, you can do it through the basic, like the permission settings. So in this example, if my robot wanted to prevent me from just pushing anywhere, what they would do is they would come over here to the left, I think Zoom's in the way, but they would change my permissions from administrator to member. And then I can only provide access to one location. So it, it actually provides extremely flexible data flows. Um, but yeah, so then we get into, um, we get into the actual sharing of sheets. Remember I said there's two locations that you can, um, you can work in. You can work in sheets or you can work in files. What I like about the sheets is the sheets can be automated. So you can think about this like the best way to address this is like if I am controlling the sheets and then I'm distributing those out in a sy systematic process, like a GC distributing to a team or a design team distributing to a, a build team, um, Anytime I add a sheet here from my computer, I just basically throw it in there and it gets processed. And when I decide to share that sheet, it will automatically push to another project, right? Um, so if I upload a 1.10, a this is on version three, it will update over here automatically in my connected account. It's like a live link with the model, but now with the documentation. Correct. So yep. They're, they're bridging the gap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Those marketing folks at Autodesk really, really got it together, right? <laughs> um, so they, the thing is, is you have to push individual sheets. Um, so for example, like this A, 10.12 is not over here. So I did this on purpose so I could show you. If you want to share this, you just check the box and then you come up here and you say, I want to share to another project. And then I pick my project. And if I toggle this on, it will automatically push to the receiving project every time that sheet is updated. And now that is live set up in this project. Um, I was testing it this morning at like 5 a.m. and it was like almost instantaneous. But as like the world woke up and got to work, like it's definitely slowed down a lot. So it's definitely a cloud bandwidth issue. Um, but yeah, so eventually over here on the right, this, this sheet will just appear in my sheet list. Um, files on the other hand are slightly different. Files do not support automatic updates. Um, no, I don't want to attend your webinar. So for example, I have in here some faux architecture like Revit models. If I want to, I can push these to another um, project. And I'm gonna pick that, I'm gonna dump it into my bridge folder right here. If I toggle on automatic updates, it gives me a, a warning because you can't do that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and push it and I'll show you what happens on the receiving side in my files, and I thought this was really interesting. They don't overwrite, they actually stack. Yeah, so like, let me make that bigger. So it doesn't overwrite it, it doesn't stack, it, 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 it creates a new copy, right? So unfortunately, it's not like I can just keep overwriting the same file so I get that version tracking, but it still provides the latest update and it keeps them independent. Um, Last thing I wanted to point out, like, like once it's set up, it literally just works. You can't automate files, but you can automate sheets. Um, and this I thought was really interesting in Revit. So I'm in Revit and this is just a, a dummy file I have up there. If I go to that bridged location, I can't see the architectural model that just got pushed over at all. But what I can do is I can go back and if I use my link Revit, Link Revit will actually let me see the file. So I don't know exactly where this is going, but I'm super excited that like 
Revit can actually see these um, these files. Well, and give me give me a real world example as to when you might use this. So What's the some idea, data you might want to be able to grab from from here. Yeah, yeah. So I can think of two really good examples. Um, first one being like just the transitioning of data from from point A to point B. You know, the handoff from design team to build team, from facilities management team to design team, um, anything like that. Um, additionally, like assuming the Revit linking part works in the future, um, that would be a great way to manage a design build project delivery because then all the subs and the design assist partners can just live link copies of the design models and the design team can control when those models are updated. So it allows everybody to work in their individual hubs. What I also really like about this, and I'm excited about it, some of my, some of my other team members aren't, the, the consultants are no longer beholden to the architectural team to access their own data. So they can host their own data on their account and push it to an architectural team. Architectural team can bring that information in. The only piece that's missing is that Revit linking. So. Uh, but it's a it's a fairly new product, so we'll have to see where Autodesk goes with it. So, uh, yeah, that's my tip. I know I, maybe I ran a little over time, but I hope uh, hope that was exciting for for y'all because I think it has the potential to completely change how we work on the cloud.